Welcome to Dunwoody College of Technology, Mechanical Engineering 2240, Mechanics of Materials. This is the solution to the quiz one uh, from spring of 2019. I'll grab a pen here and we'll start the solution to this. So we're given this assembly with a bar running across, it's pinned at one end, supported by a roller or a s smooth support here at some midpoint, and then it's cantilevered after that where a motor is tensioning a, a wire, it's winding this up, raising this load. And we are looking at this and we're looking to find the internal loadings at point C. So we're going to section this thing at point C here and find what our internal loads are. We're told what our load or mass D is. So D has 450 kilograms of mass. We'll have to find that's weight in a moment. And we're told that it's being hoisted by a motor M with constant velocity. At constant velocity, that's telling us that A, our acceleration, is zero, so our tensions are equal, T1 and T2. It's not accelerating, it's not uh, causing some bigger tension to cause this mass to exceed um, its speed, or its current speed. It's not accelerating in this direction. If it was, the tension provided by the rope would have to be bigger than the mass of this. We'd have to know something about its acceleration to do that. Then I've given you the ways that you earn points on this quiz. So you get a point for free body diagram of the entire system. You get a free body diagram at point C. So we can take a choice of which side we want to section that and draw a free body diagram for that section or that segment. That gets us two points. We might need some reactions. We'll need at least one uh, since we have one, rea one support on this side and one support on that side. If we were taking it at point E, for example, we would not need any reaction because if we took the left side, we don't have any supports in that section causing reactions acting on that segment. Uh, we'll get one point uh, for e equations of equilibrium. So we'll get one point each for a set of three. Then finally, we'll find the internal loads at that point. So our general approach here, step one, we're going to do an entire free body diagram. Step two, section at C. And we'll choose a side. Nope. Step three, find reactions. Step four, we'll calculate internal loads with equations of equilibrium. All right, so looking at our whole thing, the entire free body diagram, what do we have is our bar, it's pinned here at A, so we'll have a reaction in the positive Y direction. Reaction in, I'll draw it in the positive X direction. It might turn out to be negative. We also have this, this pulley here. It has a uh, radius 0 0.1 meters. So we have a weight of D, which is 450 kilograms times 9.81 down. That is going to be connected all the way over here to the end. And we're going to have the tension here, which is going to be equal to our weight D. The point B, we have a force in the Y direction. And our point C is hiding in here somewhere. Here's point C. And we'll just sketch out where our, our lengths are here. So we have 2 meters up to the first pulley, 2 meters from that to B and then another two meters to the center of our last pulley here. And this again is a radius of 0 0.1 meters. And C here is 1.5 over from this point. So we get a point for that. Just helps us visualize what's going on here. Now I didn't put the tensions acting between these two points. They're going to be equal and opposite. It's an internal load in that system. So I'm not showing that on this full free body diagram. So we've got that whole thing. 
looking at that whole thing, I'm going to skip down here to reactions. When I section this at C, I'm going to have one one of the one of the supports in this. I can either take the right hand side and have the supports at A, or I can take the left hand side and have the support at B. I'm going to choose the left hand side because I only have to find one reaction. A little simpler to do that. So I'm going to do that and we'll section at C. I'm going to call this segment uh, BC. It's not really BC, but it's the left hand side of that. So now I've got my my pulley. This is coming across. This is point C. I'm going to have point B where I have my load here, BY. I have my tension. And this tension now is going to be, I could draw it all the way over this way. Here's my tension going that direction. Right. This height is going to be 0 0.1 meters. I have 2 meters to the end of this thing to B. And then to C, I have 1.5 meters. And what are my internal loads here? Well, I have a normal force that's going to be stretching up my beam out. That's my normal force at C. My shear wants positive shear wants to cause clockwise rotation, so I'm going to have shear at C. And then my bending moment wants my beam to smile, so it needs to be up counterclockwise. This is MC, which also happens to be a positive moment when I add up my moments to draw a positive internal moment on the, the left hand side I draw it as a clockwise moment which would then count as a negative moment when I do my su moment sums. So there's my my system here for segment uh, C to the left end. I'm going to check off that free body diagram there. So now I need my reactions. Reactions I'm going to do at B. So using my entire free body diagram what do I need to do? I can do my sum of my moments around A to find this force directly. So AY and AX both act through point A, not creating any moment. So I'm going to do my sum of my moments at A. It has to add up to zero. My weight at D is going to be acting uh, 2 minus this radius, 1.9 away. And that's causing a positive rotation, right? It's going counterclockwise around A. So I'm going to have 1.9 meters times 450 kilograms, 9.81 meters per second squared. That's my weight of D at that moment. And then at B, I'm going to have a clockwise moment, so it's going to be negative, and it's 4 meters away. So I'm going to have 4 meters times BY. Then last, at the very end here, it's going to be another positive counterclockwise moment. So I'm going to have plus. Now I'm 2, 4, 6, 6.1 meters away. And it's going to be that same 450 times 9.81 newtons. Alright, so when I solve that, and the interesting thing here is this that little offset will cancel out. I'm adding a 0.1 meter here and subtracting a 0.1 meter here since they're both going the same direction uh, that I could have just said this was at 6 and this is at 4 I wanted to point out that we need to or we ought to as a good practice include that that radius on these uh, these sums so when I do that I find um, by equals 2w so this would add up to 1.9w this would be 6.1w add those together I get 8 I get 4 here Divide by 4, 2w, so that will be 800, oh, 8,000, excuse me, 829 newtons. So there's that reaction. Great. So now I can put that in here. This is 8,829, oh, 29 newtons. And I can finally uh, add these up. And so what do I have acting here? Well, I'm going to do three equations of equilibrium. I need to find my sum of my forces in x, sum of my forces in y, and my moments about c, so I can find mc directly. So let's do y first. 
Oh, well, we can do x first. So my force is around x in x, excuse me. It's going to be 0. What do I have acting in the x direction? I didn't put a sign on here. Let me put that on here. x, y. Acting in x, I have pl positive nc. And I have positive tension. So this comes around the corner and pulling that way. And that's it. So nc equals negative tension. My tension is going to be it's going to be negative 450 times 9.81. That's going to give me newtons. So nc equals negative 4.41 kilonewtons. All right. Now my sum of my forces in y. So what do I have acting in y? I have negative tension, positive by. So I have negative tension plus by, and then I have negative shear at c. So my shear at c is going to be by minus t. So this is two w minus w equals w. So VC is also going to be 4.41 kilonewtons. All right. Now my last equation is going to be my sum of my. Oh, I lost my summation sign there. Sum of my moments around point C. So this tension is going to be causing a moment. It's going to be causing a positive moment. This tension is going to be causing a moment just by this small offset of 0 0.1 meters. A few of you made that mistake forgetting that one. And then B is going to be causing a moment. So looking at this, we get a positive moment of 2 plus 1.5 plus 0.1. So we get 3.6 meters times T. Then we're going to subtract off 0 0.1 meters times T. So this one's pulling that way, clockwise, negative moment. Oh. BY is going clockwise, so we're going to have minus 1.5 meters times BY. And last, we have our MC, which is going counterclockwise, so it's positive. So if I rearrange that, MC equals negative, so this works up to 3.5 uh, meters times tension and then we have we have our positive 1.5 meters times by this is w this is 2w so I'm going to have 3w minus 3.5w mc equals point negative 0 0.5 meters times w so it's going to be one half of this value 2.21 kilonewton meters there is what mc is negative so summary of these oh, internal loads my normal force at c is negative 4.41 kilonewtons my shear at c is 4.41 kilonewtons and my bending moment at C, negative 2.21 kilonewton meters.